Okay, I am going to take you guys through sort of an epic monster challenge. If you think about the most challenging cursor editing operation possible, it's probably with the Adobe apps. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the Adobe apps, they use a ton of custom cursors and those don't have vector equivalents. And so you get these sort of very nasty bitmap cursors in here. So what if I'm driving through this, you can see almost all of these different cursors, a few exceptions are these custom cursors in Photoshop, right? So one way to do this, uh, deal with this is just nuke them all and just use uh, a vector arrow cursor. Um, now the first thing I've, I've got this edited down a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these clips and I'm going to use a customized keyboard shortcut that I have, which is going to stitch all of these pieces of media together shift backslash in my case. And now I have a single piece of media here, right? So super powerful function of Camtasia. And now I come over to the cursors tab and I was saying we, we could just go into the all button and nuke everything and replace it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go into the max system cursors right here. I could replace it with the uh, arrow cursor or the pointing hand and then just call it a day. And lots of times, 95% of the time, that's probably the smart move. But if you want to do something a little bit more detailed or just understand the power that you have in your hands with cursor replacement and Camtasia, we're going to go through this exercise and it's going to take a little bit of while. It's going to take some work, right? So um, we shouldn't shy away from that. So we're going to dive into cursor replacement and go whole hog on this. So first things first, I'm going to dive out to the beginning of this uh, sequence right here. And I am going to start taking a look at each of these cursors and I'm going to start to make some decisions about how to replace them with as close as I can get to the Mac OS equivalents. Now we ship with something like 32 Mac OS vector system cursors. The Photoshop app has hundreds of custom cursors, so there's not going to be an equivalent in all cases, but we can still do a pretty decent job here, I think. So um, let's take a look at this. And the first things first is we notice we have this sort of custom, I think maybe I've got the move tool right now selected in Photoshop. And I know from just glancing through this, that there isn't really a great equivalent for that. So I'm going to, I'm going to call this one a situation where I'm going to replace all of the similar move tools with the pointing hand. So I've got the similar button selected. I am going to choose the pointing hand and now that's replaced all of the spots where I've got that move tool. So let's just keep driving through this guy. You can see here, we've got an arrow and it looks vector. So, and you know, let's just, just for clarity's sake, let's bounce this up to a thousand percent on the scale. And yep, that's a nice vector cursor. So we'll just keep moving through this. We don't need to replace that. We're going to come into this situation and it looks like we've got some sort of um, doing cropping. So uh, we've got this guy right here and there's a few different options I have for this guy. I could use one of these, um, these directional two way directional cursors, or I could come in and there is sort of the, the move. I don't know what the official name is for it. You got to look a little bit here. Some of this is a little bit small. So, so I'm looking basically for the opposite direction of this guy. So we're going to come over here and we're going to keep scrolling down. There it is right there. I'm going to replace all the times that I see this with this guy right here. Boom. So cool. All right. So let's keep driving through this. Uh, now we've got this crop tool. This is another one where there just isn't going to be a great replacement for this. So crop tool, I could use, I could do something like, you know, replace it with this guy, but really what I want to do is I want to come over and probably just in this particular case, we'll go ahead and use the arrow, right? So we'll just stick with the arrow and then we'll keep moving through this. So, all right, we've gotten to that guy more arrows. Okay. Here's, here's something that, uh, yep. That just looks like whatever the V short goes pointing the normal, normal mode in Photoshop. I'm going to replace it with the, uh, Mac arrow. And then we're just going to keep moving through these guys. Okay. All right. Now we've got this, uh, directional up and down. I know that I have one of these guys in here. 
that I want to use, I have in mind for it. So we're going to try and find it. Here it is right here. That's what I wanted. And all right, we've got this guy, which is sort of a weirdo. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just stick with this guy for that. And then we're going to keep going along here. Keep going until we find cursors that we don't like and we want to place. Okay, so I've got this diagonal two-way and there is this guy right here. So I'm going to replace all of the instances with that and just keep moving. All right, we'll get the opposite direction. Let's replace that. Just keep moving through. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Keep going. Ah, okay. Here's a, a custom hand pointing hand. You know what? We've got a pointing hand right here. So let's replace that guy with that. And let's just keep moving. And you can see at this point, I think we're pretty good. Oh, there's a weirdo. Um, I don't know. Let's just let's just stick with the arrow cursor. Replace all those guys. Hey, open hand. We know we have an open hand. Let's get that guy with this. Looks so much better, doesn't it? And then beam, eye beams. Yeah. All right. Keep going. Keep going. And you know, it's, it's there's a, a delicate balance between uh, you know where you want to be looking. So sometimes you know it's easiest just to focus up here in the cursor replacement panel on the current cursor, and that's where you want to be 90% of the time. But I like to go back and forth and sort of just verify that well, what I'm looking at. So we're gonna keep moving. Okay, so now we've got these these sort of they seem to be indeterminate progress spinners, and if Maybe your best bet, normally if I was doing this, I'd probably just replace them with the arrow or cut them completely out. But we've got the beach ball, which is the Mac equivalent of that. And we'll just keep moving. And and there's so much movement in these guys that, that the recording metadata wants to treat them all as unique individual cursors, right? So the similar operation isn't picking up all of them, but we're just going to go ahead and keep moving through this. Eventually we'll get there. So keep going keep going and yep we got we got through that sequence and then we get this weird i don't know what the heck that is let's you know what let's make that guy a pointing hand and then i'm through this we're looking good we might have got this whooped up getting close oops one more of those guys I missed come in here. And the nice thing is, is once, once I've got all these swapped out with this beach ball, then if I ever want to change it to something else, it's going to be a single item that we understand and we'll just be able to replace it with some other cursor. Right? So boom, boom, boom. Oh, here's one of these guys. We've got a two way directional. I think we were using, um, in this example, we were using, was it, this guy right here. Nope. Nope. I got confused by that. There we go. There we are. That's what we wanted. Keep going. Keep moving through. Beach ball. All right. And so if we, if we navigate now through this and I'm going to, I'm going to pull all the way back to the very beginning of the timeline. And we're just going to give this a, a watch. We won't watch all of it, but we'll just take a look at what we've got going on. So you can see now I've got big, beautiful vector replacements. You know what? I saw some flicker back over here and this is one thing that's okay. So for the briefest moment of time, yeah, it's actually a single, a single frame. I'm using the keyboard to navigate. It goes to this guy and I just, I want to get rid of that. You know what? I'm just going to make that guy into the arrow so that we don't have that going on. So um, let's now let's let's go back keep watching we'll keep our eyes out for big flicker that we want to remove looks like we still have a little bit actually no i think that's just the pop-up right there is the thing that looks like it's flickering is yeah it's it's this guy flashing up when i roll over things this pop-up that they've got so i'd probably just cut that out of the recording entirely doing this 
And yeah, we're moving through this. And yep, doing some cropping right there, just moving things around. And yep, crop there, crop there. Going through. Hey, this is pretty, looking pretty neat, right? So, and again, full control over the, the scale of these guys. I can make this giant if I wanted to. I can back it way off if I wanted to. It's going to look great because they're all vectors now and I've replaced them. Yep. And there we go. I guess what I want people to understand is you, you have a lot of control. You have a lot of editorial choices that you can make. You sort of have to go through and decide in your mind... Hey, do I want to have some variation, some variety? Do I want to get down and do some granular editing? And if you do that, we have these, these nice convenience functions. You know, hey, I can just replace the single cursor that I'm looking at right now between those two keyframes. Or I can go ahead and find all the cursors that look like this and replace it with something else. Or I can go nuclear. I can just nuke them all out and go with one cursor, right? Um, I can go back and add things in. But you, this allows you, the, the cursor packs that we have, uh, the choices, the convenience operations, it allows you to have some choice and to really and really be thoughtful about what you want to convey, when you want cursor changes to happen. It allows you to replace all those nasty cursors and it allows you to take something as complex as Photoshop with all of its custom cursors and really make something into that's that's really uh, you know very watchable, um, looks beautiful, and you have complete control over the scaling of the cursors. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you can see the possibilities. I hope it makes you want to go out and explore what you can do with Camtasia.